Hey, it's Chris from Military Aviation History and I'm standing in front of the P-40K and we're going to be jumping inside. Now, big thank you here, of course, to Fagan Fighters based in Granite Falls, Minnesota, for giving full access to this machine. It's a fantastic museum and you ought to check it out when you pass through Minnesota. Now, we're at Oshkosh 2023, which means there is going to be engine noises just like there. And there's going to be people. So let's just embrace the aviation spirit and roll with it. Now, with the P40K here, well, remember, inside the cockpit, 100% community funded as well. So big thank you to all the Patreons. So that is uh, Patreons, channel members, and of course, the crowdfunders, and specifically, then also Brian for sponsoring this episode. Now, what we have in the AAP40 here is up front a Curtis Electric propeller with a diameter of 3.3 meters. And behind that is, of course, powered by the Allison 1710-73 engine. Now, that produces a maximum of 1,550 horsepower. But in order to achieve that output, you will have to crank it up to 3,000 RPMs and 52 inches of manifold pressure. So let's drop that down to a more manageable uh, 2300 rpms at 30 inches of manifold pressure for your cruise because the original setting that i gave you there was for emergency power now you see the six exhaust here yep it is a 12 cylinder inline liquid cooled engine you have the carburetor intake on top and you have the radiators in that big scoop below that the top ones the two top ones are for your liquid cooling and the bottom one is for your oil cooling and you can see the outlet flaps for that just about here we also have the stalker uh, crank attachment right here and behind the engine we find the oil tank 13 gallons in the system we find the liquid cooling 15 gallons in that system and of course also a firewall providing protection to the pilot from incoming fire from the front and also that backup site there little retro backup site i really really adore that now we have the gun camera here in the in the gear fairing and that swings backwards the gear does and then rotates 90 degrees and goes right into the gear well 50 cals i'm going to talk about those on the port wing as always so let's move around the leading edge to the wingtip on the wingtip we have our uh, navigational lighting and then of course as we come around you will find your fabric covered aileron with a fixed aileron tab here as well as split flaps now the aircraft itself uh, the fuel tank the range of the p40 isn't that great you have two tanks up front below the pilot 30 gallons on your reserve and 50 to 55 gallons on your main and then a 62 gallon tank behind that the aircraft itself is constructed uh, semi monocoque and the weight goes from 6500 pounds empty to 9,000 pounds fully loaded depending on which variant of the p40 we have and of course what your loadout is as we move to the back then here we have identification lights for iff down low and we have this specific fairing here as well and that is unique to the p40k if you look at the older p40 variants you'll see that there is a very steep rise in in the angle so from the fuselage immediately into the tail in the vertical stabilizer and here is there's a very smooth transition we have a retractable tail wheel in the back and then let's talk about the tail itself it's a conventional tail setup with the fabric covered uh, control surfaces both the elevator and the rudder with trim tabs as well on both of these now then let's swing around and talk about what's in the fuselage What's in there? Well, it's what you would expect. You would have oxygen, you would have uh, batteries, and you would also have your radio sets in there. And then of course also an armored screen right there. And you can also see the mast antenna over there. The compartment can be easily accessed via this door. And we'll also swing the camera inside there to give you a closer look. And what you're hearing right now is a Sky Raider in a formation with a Mustang and an F-22. And that is utterly glorious. Now, before I forget where I was, let's go back to the P40. We have the armor boxes that are stored in the back here. I will talk about the weapon systems in just a second. But then we have the aileron tab here, uh, the aileron trim tab right here. Remember on the starboard wing, it was a fixed tab here. It is a variable tab. Now, let's move to the wing tip then. Navigational lighting once again. And as you come around, you'll see this Lancy, pikey looking thing. That is, of course, the pedo tube. 
we have a retractable landing light here and then we find attachment points for outboard weapon systems. P-40s were also used as fighter bombers and they could for example be armed typically with bombs so on the wings you would typically find a single 500 pound bomb let's say one on each wing and then in the center line you can have an additional 500 pound bomb or a thousand pound bomb in the center line you also have provisions for drop tanks uh, 52 or 105 gallons would be provided there and then finally let's come to the weapon systems uh, three 50 cows on either side of the aircraft we have uh, that is of course a 12.7 by 99 millimeter cartridge and you have 1410 rounds in the weapon and that provides you with 235 a gun and that gives you 10 seconds of fire which is pretty pretty damn cool i would say and then finally what i would say before we jump inside of course the camo scheme that you see here Aleutian tigers is in fact inspired by the real life p40 that was flown by uh, chenot's son which is pretty cool so with all of that said let's jump inside all right let's jump into Aleutian tiger a big thank you here to ron fagan from fagan's fighters for this fantastic access and all the crowdfunders and channel supporters for making this trip possible. If you want early access to episodes just like this one, check out Patreon or channel memberships. Quite a few videos from the US trip are already in early access for all of you to enjoy. Here in typical fashion, we will go through this clockwise. We start on the pilot's left then swing over to the central instrument board and then hit up the right side. Finally, we finish this off with the stick. Fagan's fighters have this aircraft in immaculate flying condition and everything is original with the exception of course for any requirements for flying under today's regulation. Starting out on the left we find the flap control handle at 9 o'clock. The red handle is the landing gear lever. The flywheels are for the elevator trim control and for the rudder trim control. And you can see that little switch just right behind the rudder trim. That's the aileron trim control. Coming to the throttle quadrant, we of course find the throttle with an integrated push to talk button for the VHF set, the SCR522. The mixture control handle is found right next to it with the propeller pitch handle that is used in conjunction with the automatic governor in the constant speed setting for the propeller. The flywheel there is to tension the friction of the throttle quadrant control levers and then we have the fuel tank selector that rounds off this side. Moving towards the front and starting out on the top, we find the position that would originally be for the optical gun side. Then we still have the old school cowboy shooting backup side that is placed on the outside of the windscreen above the engine cowling. Then starting with the forward instruments, we have the landing gear position indicator. We have a radio contactor for navigational purposes and the fuselage tank fuel indicator. And then we are settling in for the basic six. We have a compass, a speedometer in miles per hour, as well as the altimeter in feet. Moving then to the right hand side, you'll recognize the modern Garmin navigational equipment of course. To state the obvious, this was not available during World War II. Below the Garmin, the continuation of your six pack, starting with a turn and slip indicator, a vertical speedometer, as well as another compass and the artificial horizon. Then we come to engine dials with the manifold pressure indicator featuring a helpful green notch to designate engine limits. The engine RPM indicator again with a visual aid for the maximum output is found next to it. Then we have the fuel suction gauge and a free air temperature gauge for measuring the temperature of the airstream. Coolant engine temperature gauge is found here as well. And then we have a triple gauge for oil temperature and oil and fuel pressure. On the lower central console, we find the parking brake all the way to the left. Then we have the booster pump switch, as well as the propeller control switch, which includes the automatic pitch control via the governor and the propeller control handle we saw on the throttle quadrant earlier. Or alternatively, you'll have the manual adjustment control over the blade angle right here if you're flying in fixed pitch. The red handle is the ignition switch and then we have electric control switches for a variety of systems including the landing gear on the top right. Illumination control knobs for instruments, the compass and the gun sight are found here as well, as well as an ammeter for electrical power and finally the weapon control switches for guns 
bombs and the gun camera. And then to the right of this, we have the main circuit breakers. All right, moving onwards to the right hand side. Here we find the canopy hand crank for the cockpit canopy, which slides in and out on a rail. Below this are the radio transmitter and receiver control switches, as well as a hand pump for the auxiliary hydraulic pump. And behind this is the radiator shutter control. Next to this, we find the light switches for the downward IFF lights. And in the red basket, we have a modern radio set. Coming then to the stick, well, first of all, take note of the rear wing fuel tank indicator to its left. And a similar gauge is then installed forward of the stick to the right hand side for the front wing tank. Then to the right, we see the connection point for the emergency hydraulic pump. This one is operated by connecting the lever from the previously shown aux pump. Moving to the central console, we find the engine starter foot pedal, as well as the oxygen mass connector and oxygen flow and capacity indicator, as well as an engine primer pump, a windshield defroster switch, and finally a cockpit heat and vent lever. And as you can see, this console is of course placed behind the stick and in between the rudder pedals that provide your control to the pilot. And then we come to the stick. This gives the obligatory pitch and roll control that you are familiar with from aircraft. And then we have the toggle switch, which operates hydraulically operated systems like flaps or the gear. Basically, you use this in conjunction with the controls for the individual systems. You open or close them on their switches and then you hit this toggle switch and whatever you selected is then going to occur. You also have your gun trigger for DACA and finally the bush to talk button for the SCR 274 command radio. And that finishes us off on Illusion Tiger. A big thank you here to Fagan Fighters in Granite Falls, Minnesota for providing this access. It's a fantastic museum that you should definitely visit. The aircraft are in immaculate condition and most of them are flying. So definitely a place to visit if you're an aviation geek just like myself. And also here a big thank you to the crowdfunders in the community of our Patreon and channel memberships for making this trip possible. First of all, the crowdfunding to get me over to the US. And then of course, inside the cockpit here is 100% community funded as well. So your ongoing support makes this possible. Also a shout out here to Fred B for his assistance on the ground. And as for always, remember that also Patreons and channel members have early access to these videos and quite a few have already been uploaded, so check them out. As always, have a great day and see you in the sky.